So, if Earth is considered a uniform sphere of mass m, then the gravitational force on any particle of mass m at a distance r from the Earth's surface can be given as f is equal to g m m upon r square. And if this particle is let go, it will accelerate towards the center of the Earth due to the gravitational force f. And let us say the accelerations are produced is a g. Now, do not be tempted to assume it is our familiar G for a moment. We'll come to our familiar G later. So we use Newton's second law of motion and say that F is equal to M into AG. And if we combine these two equations, then we can say that G M M upon R square is equal to M into AG, which gives AG is equal to to g m upon r square and if you take the varying values of r the ag value will change as shown in this table so you can see that as the r value is changing the ag value is also changing so on the earth surface that is zero kilometers above the earth you find that ag is 9.83 meters per second square if you climb up the mount everest what you'll find is that the value of AG is 9.8 meters per second square and this is at a height of 8.8 .8 kilometers. And if you climb up further, let's say you reach the space shuttle in an orbit, which is 400 kilometers up, the G value changes to 8.7 meters per second square. And if you get into a communication satellite, which is 35,700 kilometers above the Earth, the AG value decreases significantly to 0 0.225 meters per second square. Now, in all the past lessons, we've assumed that the Earth is an inertial frame, or in other words, that Earth can be considered stationary when dealing with velocity or acceleration vectors of objects moving on or above the Earth. Hence, all this time, we assume that the free fall acceleration g of the particle is same as a gravitational acceleration that we are now calling ag, and we've also assumed that g is always equal to 9.8 meters per second square, no matter where the object is on Earth's surface. However, any g value measured at a given location will differ from a g value calculated in this equation due to three reasons. One, the Earth's mass is different at different places, or uh, more accurately, the density is different in different places, and therefore the a g value will change. Earth is not a perfect square, that is number two. It is 21 kilometers longer in radius along the equator compared to the polar radius, that is the distance from the center of the Earth to the North Pole or the South Pole. Hence, the gravitational force would be more on poles than equator. And the third reason is that the Earth rotates. Now, this part three requires a bit of examination and, and let's go ahead and do that. So, the rotation of Earth causes centripetal acceleration on the particle at all points and this force is directed towards the center of the circle in which this particle is rotating. Of course, this would be zero at the poles because the radius is zero. And presence of centripetal acceleration implies that there has to be a centripetal force directed towards the center of the circle in which the particle is rotating. So let us see how the g value changes due to rotation of the Earth. So imagine that you're right above the North Pole and seeing the Earth rotate from above. So it looks something like this. Now imagine there is a box sitting on the equator. So let us examine the forces acting on this box. So you'll have the gravitational force mag acting towards the center of the Earth. Then we'll have the normal reaction Fn acting away from the center. And we'll have this vector pointing away from the center, radially outwards. And then the centripetal force in the box due to the Earth's rotation would be omega square r directed towards the center. So if we write Newton's second law for this setup, what you get is Fn minus mag should equal to m into omega square r. And we'll put a negative sign outside because 
this is acting towards the center of the earth and likewise we've taken mag also negative because it's acting towards the center of the earth and fn has been taken positive because it's acting away from the center of the earth so if we substitute mg for fn which is nothing but what the wing scale measure what you get is mg minus m a g is equal to minus m omega square r and we can rewrite this equation like this which is nothing but measured weight being equal to gravitational force minus the mass into the centripetal acceleration thus the measured weight is actually less than the gravitational force due to earth's rotation we could also say that g is equal to ag minus omega square r or in other words you could say that the measured free fall acceleration is less than the gravitational acceleration because of earth's rotation now you would have also observed that this difference would be greatest if r is at the highest and the highest r is at the equator only so the g value is least at the equator and highest at the poles where r actually becomes zero in fact for equator the difference between g and ag can be calculated by putting r equal to 6.37 into 10 to the power 6 meters and omega equal to 2 pi r upon 24 which is nothing but the circumference divided by the time taken to cover the circumference which is we know is 24 hours and what you'll find is that the difference comes out to 0 0.034 meters per second square which you can see is quite small compared to 9.8 meters per second square that we normally use hence for all practical purposes we ignore the rotation of earth and use g as 9.8 meters per second square when working on numerical problems